Hi. Good afternoon, family. Um, whoo, I had an amazing, amazing day. I'm gonna make this pretty fast. I'm gonna make this quick because I want to um I was having a really good, I was having some really good me and God time, but I did want to come up here and read this last little section of the color purple before I take this little social media break. I had a wonderful Sunday, um, me, my father, and I have two moms, my stepmother and my mo my biological mother, but my stepmother is very my mother, okay? So I... Um, I took them, I invited them to come to church with me today, and we had a phenomenal, I almost want to get emotional thinking about it now, and then we went out to breakfast afterwards at City Diner, and it was just so beautiful, so I'm just having a really beautiful day today, like, I'm just having a really, 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 really beautiful day, and I just feel so good, like, so full of love, and I feel good, and I'm so blessed. Um... And so I've been doing laundry. Actually, my laundry is in this closet right here. And so I had to um, turn it off <laughs> so it wouldn't make noise. <laughs> so I'm doing laundry. I'm looking at that Megan and Harry interview. I'm just really chilling right now. Um, and I really want to go back into chill mode, to be completely honest with you. I'm having such a good time like with just me and the Lord, like I told you, I'm in beast mode right now and I want to stay in beast mode. And when I, when I finished up with my family earlier, I came home and I'm, I really want to go back to what I'm doing. <laughs> really, honestly, I want to go back to that quiet time and that peaceful time where I'm just cultivating my relationship, my walk with Jesus Christ. Um, you know, my only Lord and Savior, the only deity that I worship, the only one. And yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead on and read this. Um, also understand I will be back. So, you know, if you have the color purple, you know, there's like a little intermission in the movie, right? So consider this the intermission in the movie after I finish this break. I don't know when I'll be back on social media. I would, I would love to be like, I'll be back in a month, <laughs> but it could be sooner than that. But I need to take a break. I need to step away from the crowd, really, and just really focus on my star player, <laughs> my star player. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, let's get into it. So where we left off, Steely and Shug have taken their relationship to the next level also known as they had sex. It just is what it is. Um, they are, they wouldn't classify themselves as lesbians, but they have love for each other, that type of love. And um, Shug also found out that Nettie has been writing Celie and she got a letter to her. And then the letter let her know, you know, I've been writing you every day. And I cut back to now only Christmas and Easter. And hopefully I, you know, I hope this finds you. And so uh, Shug found the letter, gave it to Celie. And now Celie has like this whole newfound hope. And so we're just kind of picking up there. And remember, remember Shug brought her husband to Mr.'s house. And as you know, Shug and Mr. are like first loves, I guess forever love. I think they'll always love each other. But, you know, once she found out that he was like beating on Sealy, who she does also love, she was like, I'm not like that no more. He's just family. But let's see where this goes. <laughs> okay, let's see. And I'm going to miss reading the color purple with you all. Um, if you don't realize, I love to do voices. Like, I like to pretend I'm in a play. I've always loved to entertain in that way. But while I'm away, just know, like, if you continue to read, keep me in your heart. Know that this is my book. Reach out to me. You can send me an email and let me know what you think about the book. Um, but I'll be back to read it once I am done following the Lord's orders. And, you know, once beast mode is fully activated, right? <laughs> I'll be back. I promise. Pinky promise. Okay.
All right. Also, I'm not doing a podcast. I don't even know why this is out here. Like, I, I, feel, I realized I said that earlier, like, this is podcast equipment, but I feel like the Lord wants me to do something else with this. Maybe I'm thinking Twitch, if you know anything about Twitch. Twitch is a different environment. And fun fact, I used to get, y'all, this is so crazy that I'm even telling y'all this right now, but I'm just going to tell you, people used to pay me to look at my feet. <laughs> on Twitch. And I used to let them do this. Okay. This is so wrong and immoral, but I used to do this and they used to have me like lay on the bed and like pop my feet up with my feet, <laughs> the soles of my, listen, I don't want y'all to do this, but understand that there is people pay good money to see some feet and it's really sick. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you don't do it, yo. None of it is right. No type of getting money like that is not good. Okay. It's not good. But they used to, um, I used to, like I was a little schoolgirl, like writing in my diary and I would have my feet up and so you could just see the soles of my feet. Yeah. I used to get money. For that. So that is why I used to be on Twitch and the Lord is telling me it's some crazy things that go on on Twitch. And I feel like, um, anyway, We'll see what happens. Okay. But just know, yes, I used to do some really like weird, I would never do like, I mean, but I guess really that would be like a form of a sexual act because it's no way that they're just like, oh, she's got pretty feet. Let me pay her. You know, they probably were doing some really crazy stuff to, to my feet and they would have given me requests like paint your toes white and I would paint my toes white and oh my God, I can't even believe I'm telling you this, but it's it's true. This is what I used to do on Twitch, okay? So I'm not, uh-huh. That is my past, as in last year. <laughs> I'm not about that life anymore. Gross. I can't even, I'm so mad at myself. No, I'm not gross. Okay? Anyway. So let's read. Let's read, you know? Let me tell you. If, if, Lord, if the Lord can save a wretched soul like mine, <laughs> he can definitely he can definitely turn your life around. I'll never forget when I started. I was like, what? They like my feet. They'll pay me what just to show my feet? You don't want that money, right? You don't want it like that. Oh, God, thank the Lord for deliverance. Okay, let's read this book. All right. <laughs> I And also let it be known, I'm not embarrassed. I just can't believe like. Satan really had me. That's all I got to say. Because who knows how much worse it could have got from there. You know what I'm saying? It could have been one-on-one -on -one calls where I'm really showing my feet and they're like doing crazy. Oh, Jesus. Thank you for deliverance. <laughs> Ooh, the money. Money really is a root of all evil. You don't need it. It's paper. It's paper. It carries the energy. And it's a bad, nasty energy. But only if you know, um, you know how to be a good steward of money. And, you know, of course, allowing the Lord into your life to help you with that. All right. Don't. Bruh. All that money, though, has been stolen from me. So just know that if you're getting money and it's not in the right way, you I'm talking about the Lord. You gonna feel like it's the enemy, but it's the Lord taking back every dirty penny you've ever gotten. Lord, said, ain't nobody asked you to get money that way. What is wrong with you? Give me that gone. I can't tell you where that money is. <laughs> that money has come and gone, honey. But anyways, I spent way too long talking about that. All right. So, wow. Probably get no views from this because I took too long to start the book. Okay. Sorry. But anyway. All right. Dear God. <laughs> All of a sudden, should buddy buddy again with mister. They sit on the steps, go down the hoppos, walk to the mailbox. Should laugh and laugh when he got anything to say. Show teeth and tits aplenty. Me and Grady try to carry on like us civilized, but it's hard. When I hear Suge laugh, I want to choke her and slap Mr. Face. All this week I suffer. Grady and me feel so down he turned to Rifa, and I turned to prayer. Saturday morning, Suge put Nettie letter in my lap. Little fat queen of England stamps on it. Plus stamps that got peanuts, coconuts, rubber trees, and say Africa. I don't know where England at. Don't know where Africa at either. So I still don't know where Nettie at. He been keeping your letters, say Shug. 
No, I say. Mr. Mean sometimes, but he not that mean. She said, hmm, he that mean. But how come he do it, I asked. He know Nettie mean everything in the world to me. Shook says she don't know, but us gonna find out. Us sealed the letter up again and put it back in Mr. Pocket. He walked round with it in his coat all day. He never mentioned it. Just talk and laugh with Grady, Harpo, and Swain and try to learn how to drive Suge's car. I watch him so close, I begin to feel a lightning in my head. For I know anything, I'm standing behind his chair with his razor open. Then I hear Suge laugh, like something just too funny. She say to me, I know I told you I need something to cut his hangnail with, but I would get real niggerish about his razor. Mr. Look behind him. Put that down, he said. Women always needing to cut this and shave that and always gumming up the razor. Shug got her hand on the razor now. She said, oh, look, it does anyway. She take and sling it back into the shaving box. All day long, I act just like Sophia. I stutter. I mutter to myself. I stumble about the house crazy for Mr. Blood. In my mind, he fallen dead every which away. By the time night come, I can't speak. Every time I open my mouth, nothing come out but a little burp. She'll tell everybody I got the fever, and she put me to bed. And probably catching, she said to Mister. Maybe you better sleep somewhere else. <laughs> Yo, Silly said I'm about to kill her. <laughs> Somewhere else, right? You're not gonna make it through the night with this one. <laughs> Woo! All that, all that he put her through. It was finding out that Nettie's letters wasn't coming through. That was enough for her to be like, "You gotta go." Like that's one thing. It's one thing for you to put your hands on me. It's one thing for you to use, have sex with me like I'm a toilet. It's a whole nother thing for you to hide these letters from me. Hey, man, you gotta die. <laughs> She's ready for blood, bro. That's wild. All right. But she stayed with me all night long. I don't sleep. I don't cry. I don't do nothing. I'm cold, too. Pretty soon, I think maybe I'm dead. Shook hold me close to her and sometimes talk. One thing my mama hated me for was how much I loved to fuck, she said. She never loved to do nothing. Had anything... She never loved to do nothing had, okay. She never loved to do nothing had anything to do with touching nobody, she said. I tried to kiss her. She turned her mouth away. Say, cut that, cut that out, Lily, she said. Lily, Suge's real name. She just so sweet. They call her Suge. My daddy loved me to kiss me and to kiss and hug him, but she didn't like that look. She didn't like the look for that. So when I met Albert and once I got in his arms, Nothing could get me out. It was good, too, she said. You know, for me to have three babies by Albert, and Albert, weak as he is, it had to be good. <laughs> I had every one of my babies at home, too. Midwife come, preacher come, a bunch of the good ladies from the church. Just when I hurt so much, I don't know my own name. They think a good time to talk about repent. She laughed. I was too big a fool to repent. Then she said, I loved me some Albert. I don't even want to say nothing. Where I met it peaceful, it calm. No Albert here. No Suge. Nothing. Suge say, the last baby did it. They turned me out. I went to stay with my mama, wild sister in Memphis. She just like me, mama say. She drinks, she fight, she love men to death. She work in a roadhouse, cook, feed 50 men, screw 55. Oh, child. <laughs> Should talk and talk. And dance, she say. Nobody danced like I was when we was young. Sometimes us did the moochie for an hour. After that, nothing to do but go somewhere and lay down. And funny. Albert was so funny. He kept me laughing. How come he ain't funny no more, she asked. How come he never hardly laughed? How come he don't dance, she said. Good God, Celie, she said. What happened to the man I love? 
adult. Ain't adult. <laughs> Ain't adult. What happened? Mm. She cried a little while. Then she said, I was so surprised when I heard he was going to marry Annie Julia. She said, too surprised to be hurt. I didn't believe it. After all, Albert knew as well as me that love would have to go go some to be better than ours. Us had the kind of love couldn't be improved. That's what I thought. That's what you thought. Okay, that's what you be thinking, but it don't be that way. <laughs> Let me get my feelings up out of this. Okay, okay. <laughs> but he weak, she said. His daddy told him I'm trash. My mama trashed before me. His brothers say the same. I would try to stand up for us and get knocked down. One reason they give him for not marrying me is because I have children. But they his. Oh, ain't that crazy? But they his. I told old mister. Well, how us know? He asked. Poor Annie Julia shook say. She never had a chance. I was so mean and so wild. Lord, I used to go around saying, I don't care who he married to. I'm going to fuck him. She stopped talking a minute. Then she said, I did too. Us fuck so much in the open, us give fucking a bad name. But he fucked Annie Julia too, she said, and she didn't have nothing, not even a liking for him. Her family forgot about her once she married. And then Harpo and all the children start to come. Finally, she started to sleep with that man that shot her down. Albert beat her. The children dragged on her. Sometimes I wonder what she thought about while she died. Mm. I know what I'm thinking about, I think. Nothing. And as much as of it as and as much of it as I can. I went to school with Annie Julia, should say. She was pretty, man, black as anything, and skin just as smooth. Big black eyes look like moons and sweet too. Hell say should I liked her myself. Why I hurt her so. I used to keep Albert away from home for a week at a time. Mm. She'd come and beg for him for money to buy groceries for the children. Oh, my God. <sighs> That's sad. I feel a few drops of water on my hand. And when I come here, say, Shug. And when I come here, say, Shug, I treated you so mean, like you was a servant. And all because I would marry you. And I didn't even want him for a husband, she said. I never really wanted Albert for a husband, but just to choose me, you know, because nature had already done it. Nature said, you two folks hook up because you a good example of how it's supposed to go. I didn't want nothing to be able to go against that. Well, what was good between us must have been nothing but body, she said, because I don't know that Albert. I don't know the Albert that don't dance, can't hardly laugh, never talk about nothing beat you and hid your sister's letters. Who he? I don't know nothing, I think. and glad of it. Dear God, now that I know Albert Hyde and Nettie's letters, I know exactly where they is. They in his trunk. Everything that means something to Albert go in his trunk. He keep it locked up tight. But sure can get the key. One night, when Mr. and Grady gone, us opened the trunk. Us find a lot of Shug's underclothes. <laughs> you nasty. <laughs> Some nasty picture postcards. And way down under his tobacco, Natty's letters. Bunches and bunches of them. Some fat, some thin, some open, some not. What's going to do this? I asked Shug. She say simple. We take the letters out the envelopes, leave the envelopes just like they is. I don't think he look in this corner of the trunk much. She said, I heated the stove, put on the kettle, a steam and steamed the envelopes until we had all the letters laying on the table. Then let's put the envelopes back inside the trunk. I'm going to put them in some kind of order for you, say Shug. Yeah, I say, but don't let's, but don't, let's do it in here. Let's go in you and Grady room. So she got up and us went into the little room. Shook sat in a chair by the bed with all Nettie's letters spread around her. I got on the bed with the pillows behind my back. These the first ones, say Shug. They postmark right here. Dear Sealy, the first letter said, you've got to fight and get away from Albert. He ain't no good. 
When I left you all's house walking, he followed me on his horse. When we was well out of sight of the house, he caught up with me and started trying to talk. You know how he do. You sure is looking fine, Miss Nettie, and stuff like that. I tried to ignore him and walk faster, but my bundles was heavy and the sun was hot. After a while, I had to rest, and that's when he got down from his horse and started to try and kiss me and drag me back into the woods. Well, I started to fight him, and with God's help, I hurt him bad enough to make him let me alone. And he was so mad. He said, because of what I had done, I'd never hear from you again, and you would never hear from me. I was so mad myself, I was shaking. Anyhow, I got a ride into town on somebody's wagon, and that same somebody pointed me in the direction of Reverend Mr.'s place. And what was my surprise? When a little girl opened the door and she had your eyes set in your face. Love, Nettie. Next one said, Dear Celia, I keep thinking it's too soon to look for a letter from you. And I know you're busy. You was with, and I know how busy you is with all Mr.'s children, but I miss you so much. Please write to me as soon as you have a chance. Every day I think about you, every minute. The lady you met in town is named Corrine. The little girl's name is Olivia. The husband's name is Samuel. The little boy's name is Adam. They are sanctified, religious, and very good to me. They live in a nice house next to the church where Samuel preaches, and we spend a lot of time on church business. I say we because they always try to include me in everything they do, so I don't feel left out and alone. But God, I miss you, Celia. I think about the time you laid yourself down for me. I love you with all my heart. Your sister, Celia, uh, Nettie. Next one say, Dearest Celia, by now I'm almost crazy. I think Alba told me the truth and that he is not giving you any of my letters. The only person I can think of who could help us out is Pa, but I don't want him to know where I am. I asked Samuel if he could visit you and Mr. just to see how y'all are. But he says he can't risk putting himself between a man and wife, especially when he don't know them. And I felt bad for even having to ask him. He and Corrine have been so nice to me, but my heart is breaking. It is breaking because I cannot find any work in this town and I will have to leave. After I leave, what will happen to us? How will we ever know what is going on? Corrine and Samuel and the children are part of a group of people called missionaries of the American and African Missionary Society. They have ministered to the Indians out West and are ministering to the poor of this town, all in preparation for the work they feel they were born for, missionary work in Africa. I dread parting from them because in the short time we've been together, they've been like family to me, like family might've been, I mean. Right if you can, here are some stamps. Love, Maddie. I'm going to read this last one. It's many letters from, from Celia. I'm going to read this last one and then I'm done. And then we'll, we're having intermission until I come back online again. Next one, Fat, dated two months later, say, Dear Celia, I wrote a letter to you almost every day on the ship coming to Africa. But by the time we docked, I was so down, I tore them into little pieces and dropped them into the water. Albert is not going to let you have my letters. And so what is the use in their writing them? That's the way I felt when I tore them up and sent them to you on the waves. But now I feel different. I remember one time you said, your life made you feel so ashamed, you couldn't even talk to God about it. You had to write it. Bad as you thought your writing was. Well, now I know what you meant. And whether God will read letters or not, I know you will go on writing them, which is guidance enough for me. Anyway, when I don't write to you, I feel as bad as I do when I don't pray. Mm. Ain't that the truth? <sighs> Locked up in myself and choking on my own heart. I am so lonely, Celie. The reason I'm in Africa is because one of the missionaries that was supposed to go with Corrine and Samuel to help with the children and was setting up a school, suddenly married a man who was afraid to let her go and refused to come to Africa with her. So 
There they were, all set to go with the ticket suddenly available and no missionary to give it to. At the same time, I wasn't able to go find a job anywhere around town, but I never dreamed of going to Africa. I never even thought it was a real place, though Samuel and Corrine and even the children talked about it all the time. Miss Beasley used to say it was a place overrun with savages who didn't wear clothes. Even Corrine and Samuel thought this, thought like this at times. But they know they know a lot more about it than Miss Beasley and any of our teachers. And besides, they spoke of all the good things they could do for the downtrodden people from whom they sprang. People who need Christ and good medical advice. One day I was in town with Corrine and we saw the mayor's wife and her maid. The mayor's wife was shopping, going in and out of stores, and her maid was waiting for her on the street and taking packages. I don't know if you have ever seen the mayor's wife. She looks like a wet cat. <laughs> and there was her maid looking like the very last person in the world you'd expect to be seeing, you'd expect to see waiting on anybody. And in particular, not on anybody that looked like that. I spoke, but just speaking to me seemed to make her embarrassed and she suddenly sort of erased herself. It was the strangest thing, Celie. One minute I was saying howdy to a living woman, the next minute nothing living there, only its shape. All that night I thought about it. Then Samuel and Corrine told me what they heard about how she got to be the mayor's maid, that she attacked the mayor, and then the mayor and his wife took her from the prison to work in their home. In the morning, I started asking questions about Africa and started reading all the books Samuel and Corrine have on the subject. Did you know there were great cities in Africa, greater than Midgeville, Millage, Milledgeville, or even Atlanta thousands of years ago? That the Egyptians who built the pyramids and enslaved the Israelites were colored? That Egypt is in Africa? That the Ethiopia we read about in the Bible meant all of Africa? Hallelujah. Now they don't like to tell you that, huh? Well, I read and I read until I thought my eyes would fall out. I read where the Africans sold us because they loved money more than their own sisters and brothers. Mm. Facts. Mm. How we came to American ships, how we were made to work. I hadn't realized how I hadn't realized I was so ignorant, Celie. The little I knew about my own self wouldn't have filled a thimble. And to think Miss Be Beasley always said I was the smartest child she ever taught. Well, one thing I do thank her for, for teaching me how to learn for myself by reading and studying and writing a clear hand and for keeping me alive and somehow the desire to know. So when Corrine and Samuel asked me if I would come with them and help them build a school in the middle of Africa, I said yes but only if they would teach me everything they knew to make me as useful a missionary and someone they would not be ashamed to call a friend. They agreed to this condition and my real education began at that time. They have been so, um, they have been as good as their word and I study everything night and day. Oh, Celie, there were colored people in the world who want us to know, want us to grow and see the light. Mm, amen. They are not like, they are not all mean like Pa and Albert or beaten down like Ma was. Corrine and Samuel will have a wonderful marriage. Their only sorrow in the beginning was that they could not have children. And then they say God sent them Olivia and Adam. And as we know, Olivia and Adam are Celie's children. I wanted to say God has sent you their sister and aunt, but I didn't. Mm, look at God. And they are being brought up in love, Christian charity and awareness of God. And now God has sent me to watch over them, to protect and cherish them, to lavish all the love I feel for you on them. It is a miracle, isn't it? And no doubt impossible for you to believe. But on the other hand, if you can believe I am in Africa and I am, you can believe anything. Your sister, Nettie. Hey, cuz. Hey, 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 hey. I just finished reading my last little part of The Color Purple. I'm about to take a break from social media and the internet. You already know how that go. Bye, chai. <laughs> spy chai. <laughs> chai spy. 
still listening while I work. How you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Getting ready to take this um this little social media break. Taking a break from all this. Taking a break from the crowd. Getting ready to pour into me. So yeah. So yeah. Seely finds out that Nettie is in Africa and she also finds out that all black people ain't trash. Can I get a hallelujah? Because they're not. <laughs> Even though they don't like to talk about the fact that, you know, we were we became slaves because our own brothers and sisters sold us into slavery. We, we like to leave that part out. That's why we're trying to tell black people all the time, like, we need to show more unity because y'all acting like the people that sold us. I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, show a little bit more compassion, show a little bit more unity. I'm reading, <laughs> I'm reading the color purple. I'm reading um, and I'm about to just go chill. Um, I'm pretty much, I'm taking a break from all of this. And I explained that in my live that I did this morning. I'm taking a break. I need a break. So, um, you know, I'm taking a break. This is an intermission for the color purple as well. But like I said, if, if anyone is still reading the color purple, you know, continue reading. Um, email me if you have any thoughts about it or anything like that. Um, before I hopped on here to finish reading the color purple, I was like just having a really good day with the Lord. I had a great Sunday today. I mean, amazing Sunday. And um, I'm going to put it right here in the, hold on, hold on, I'm going to put my email here. I'll put my Instagram if you'd like to follow me there and, um, and my email. What's my Instagram? Oh. <laughs> I'm old. It's been cool. I mean, I don't really want to go into too much detail, to be honest with you. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> I'm kind of like oversharing a lot of stuff that's going on in my life right now. Um, because I need to go through some more healing about being open and honest with my journey and understanding things. So I just kind of, I kind of don't want to talk about it at the moment. Um, nothing bad is going on. It's really good things. I'm feeling really good. I just don't want to give any details. I'm not, I'm not really. So there's my Instagram. And then my email. Okay. This is terrible. I can't. It's like I'm an old lady. I believe that's my email. <laughs> so yeah, feel free to follow me on Instagram. Perfect. Everything that you share with me has been wonderful. I appreciate you sharing those things with me. But now I just need it to be me and the Lord. Like, and this is why I'm like, I need to get away from the crowd. I don't need any, no disrespect to you or anyone else. I don't need any other distractions. I need it to be me and the Lord at this point. And that's just where I am with it. Uh, going going into beast mode for the Lord. Um, I think that's Oracle. Yes, and then Everyday Ministry. Perfect. So yeah, if you follow me on Instagram, but like I said, I'm probably I'm not, which is probably why it's just best that you send me an email because I'm most likely will not be on social media like that for real. Yeah. Yeah, I've still been dreaming. Um, but like I said, everything I don't I don't think a lot of people understand that like what I what I share, what I go through is actually what I'm growing through. What I share with people is not because I know, it's because I'm literally going through those things. And the Lord is like, This is a message. And so I'm pretty sure because you're going through this, others are going through this. And I'd be darned if every time it happens, it's not true. But I feel like right now, I don't have, I, I don't need to share anything else. I need to go within. So, yeah. Your ethics. I don't know what that means. 
So yeah, um, I'm out. <laughs> I'm about to go finish watching this Megan Markle. There go my babies. Hey y'all. They're not really my babies. Like I don't I used to have a a bench outside. And so the neighborhood kids would come and sit on this bench that I had outside. Um, but they do still come by um, and look. No, no. Oh, I was like ethics. I don't know what that means. My ethnicity. I'm black. I'm blackly black and I'm black, y'all. <laughs> My mom and dad are black. Their parents are black. Their parents are black. <laughs> well, no. My dad's dad is part Indian, Native American. Excuse me. Excuse me. I don't mean to disrespect part Native American, but he's still black. Like, he's black. <laughs> <laughs> I'm black, but we're black. I'm black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Alrighty. There, and also, I shared a little bit of I shared a little bit of my of my past at the beginning of the live. You should go check it out. I think you would enjoy it. It's pretty funny. Go check it out. Um, so enjoy your Sunday, everyone. Please um, enjoy your walk. Um, as I was saying at the beginning of the live, the the Lord is calling me to go back to Twitch, but in the right way. If you didn't see that in the beginning, His Kingdom Come Ministries, you know, go back and see what I used to do on Twitch <laughs> and that I no longer do on Twitch, but um, you know, I have this new setup and everything like that because the Lord is calling me to go back on Twitch. Yeah. It, I, I share, I share what I used to do on Twitch. I used to do some things on Twitch. You just, just go and see, <laughs> just, just go look and see, just, you know, um, but I'm being called to go back to Twitch Fun fact, I love video games. I love to game. I'm not going to be gaming. I'm, you know how they have the category just chatting? I'm going to be just chatting. But to kind of offset the algorithm, I'll be chatting about the Lord and my journey and hopefully helping some people out and hopefully changing some lives because I know for a fact that when I chat with people and I'm vulnerable with people, that they don't need the same. They never do. And so... Maybe I will game, you know, maybe it'll take me there where the Lord will be like, you know, you can have a little gaming fun, but I'm being very obedient at this time. Um, the everyday ministry, same thing. <laughs> um, I put it, I mean, it's, it's written with uh, one E though. I'll write it here. And I haven't looked at my old account in a really long time. I had a really great following. <laughs> And when you go back and look at the beginning of this live, you'll understand why I had a, a pretty cool following. I'm not going to share it because it is still up. <laughs> I'm not going to share it. No, I'm going to take it down, actually. Um, yeah, and everything on there, what's, what's it? You'll know it's me because it looks just like my profile picture and it and it says, you know, it says I'm really sold out for Jesus, though. <laughs> and I know what I'm up against because I've been on that platform and I've seen how it, how it can get. I know what I'm up against. And I'm pretty much just getting in preparation to get on that platform and just kind of switch it up on people. And, you know, I my Xbox One is gone. It was stolen from me. So I don't even have a gaming system anymore. God, man, I had gotten over that. I had gotten over the fact that, you know, my Xbox One was stolen. I really, I had gotten over that. And just now it just made me miss all of my video games, but I know the Lord will restore that. And I won't, and I'll maybe, maybe the Lord will give me a PS5. <laughs> but it's not about gaming. It's not, it's really not about gaming. It's just about you know, being in, it's about presenting Jesus Christ in, in, in spaces where it wouldn't be expected. And so that is where I'm going. 
Amen. I know I do. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I know I do. But, you know, if it's in his will, if it's in his will for me to also game on that platform, then a PS5 will come and it's going to be a a lovely day. A lovely day. But I'm, I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. It's not it's not about gaming just yet, but I'm keeping my keeping my heart, heart posture on letting people know about the goodness, the love, the mercy, the compassion, the restoration and transformation of our Jesus Christ. So. Mm hmm. It's true. It's true. Yep. So I'm hoping to make a breakthrough. Well, I'm not hoping to. I already know that God is like, that is what I want you to do. And I want you to go on Twitch and do it. Where everybody's making money to do silly things, you're going to make money to spread the word. You're going to be a Twitch partner and you're going to do it by giving my word. And so I have, I'm have. i pretty much in preparation mode for that. I'm in beast mode for that. Thank you, my brother. Make sure to, like I said, if you have it, if you're thinking of anything, just feel free to email me because I'll probably get the email before I get any social media things because I'm really, I'm really just trying to stay, keep my eyes off of the crowd completely. And so that mindless scrolling, I need to break out of that. All of that needs to be broken. And we all know that takes about 30 days to break a habit, which is why I said, I don't know if I'll be gone for 30 days, who knows, but I'm going to just stay prayed up. And I'm just, you know, I even tried today. I tried today. You'll see that I did okay. If you go follow me on Instagram, you'll see I did all right. <laughs> but I still posted. <laughs> I still posted. All right, yo. Um, it was a pleasure. Everyone, take care while I'm away. Know that I'm praying for you um, every day and every way. And I hope that everyone wakes up every day with a renewed mind, a renewed heart, and a renewed spirit. Okay? Peace. I love y'all.